Good evening. Uh, my name is Aaron Parecki. How's everybody doing tonight? Great. So I am here to tell you about the vowel R. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll know a little bit more about linguistics and uh, specifically the phonetics subfield of linguistics. So I'd, I'd like to buy a vowel. <laughs> it rains a lot in Portland. Uh, how many vowels did I just say? Well, before uh, we can count the vowels, we have to know what a vowel is. Before we can uh, know what a vowel is, we should look at how speech is produced. So uh, air starts in your lungs and works its way upward through your, uh, through your trachea, through your vocal cords, which vibrate and make a tone. And then your mouth and the tongue and teeth shape the tone into the various sounds. Uh, consonants are created when there's an obstruction of the airflow in your, uh, in your mouth. And uh, the consonants can be described by where the, air, where the constriction of airflow takes place, whether it's in the front of your mouth or on your lips or in your teeth or in your back of your throat. For example, p and b. The only difference between these two are whether, there's, uh, whether your vocal cords are involved. So p is voiceless and b is voiced. Uh, both happen at the tip of your mouth, at your lips. Uh, on the other hand, k and g, k, they're, again, they're the same sound other than your vocal cords being involved. So k happens at the, at the back of your mouth, uh, at your soft palate. G, same place, but your vocal cords are, uh, are moving in that case and vibrating. So vowels, on the other hand, uh, can be described by the height of, of the tongue. Um, e, your tongue is very high in your mouth, and ah, your tongue is very low. And then various levels in between, a, uh, those are all uh, various heights of your tongue. Uh, the other metric in there is whether your tongue is forward or back in the mouth. So front, front close vowels, e. And on the other hand, you've got back low open vowel, which would be something like ah. Uh, the highlighted ones are the vowels that are in English. There are vowels in other languages that we don't have in English. For example, the German u, that's a front close vowel. We don't have that in English, so you have no idea what I was saying. Uh, if you're punched in the stomach, you might make it sound like uh, right? Uh, we don't have that in English either. And if you're at the dentist's office, you might make, might make it sound like ah. Uh, again, not in English. Now, if you're punched in the stomach at a German dentist's office. <laughs> so, and, and, and this is not so far from, from, from the reality. I mean, er is a very neutral vowel. So the other way we can look at vowels is by looking at the, after the sound is produced, what sound came out. Uh, th these are spectrograms of what pure sine waves look like. Uh, the 440 hertz, it's just a, a solid bar. It would look like a solid bar. If you have two sine waves, you would see two bars. Uh, if we start looking at different vowels, e, u, and a, ah, we can see that the vowels look very different when plotted onto the spectrograph. E, the, the, the two bands are pretty far apart. Uh, one is very low, one is very high. U, the two bands are close together and low. And a, ah, there's a lot more sound there. It's a lot darker on this, on this image. Uh, if you look at all of that, I was plotted out on a chart, you can see that they range based on uh, basically how far apart the two formants are or how uh, high and low they are. And at the, at the very end of the chart, there's the vowel er, which is, uh, again, pretty much in the middle. It's a very neutral vowel. Uh, consonants look very different from vowels. Consonants are uh, a put and but. They look like bursts of air. They're bursts of noise. Uh, s and z. Again, the same vowel. One is voiced, one is voiceless. Uh, they're basically just noise, white noise. Uh, a lot of, all the frequencies are present. You can see that because it's just a solid black band. Uh, here's the sentence. It rains a lot in Portland. A uh, combination of vowels and consonants. And if you look at the, uh, the t, the t is, uh, it stops before you say it and then it bursts of air. If you look at the r's in these, they look more like the vowels than they do like the consonants in the spectrograms that I just showed before. Uh, here's word, bird, heard, third. The vowels in all of these, the only vowel in these words is, is the vowel r. And if you look at them, they look a lot like the, the, the vowels we were looking at in the spectrograms before. They're very uh, neutral, mid, they're not, uh, it's not like the E. So um, the vowels that are not in English tend to be, if, if you're an English speaker, you're going to tend to map them onto a vowel that you do know. So if you hear a vowel that's not in English, you're going to, if, you, if I were to ask you to recall it, you would say, oh, that's, you know, er. So if I were to say the German word schön and ask you to spell that, you might spell it S-C-H-E-R-N because you heard the vowel R. Uh, coincidentally, that means beautiful. So the, the, there's, there's various ways in which these vowels, uh, in which R looks like a vowel and acts like a vowel. A-E-I-O-U-R. Uh, <laughs> we looked at how it, it is produced. It's produced like a vowel. We looked at the way it 
it's, it looks in the spectrograph, it, it looks like a vowel there, and if I were to say it, it sounds like a vowel to you. So thank you very much, Dr. Sharon.